Hey there, instead of trying different integers and seeing if any of them fall into a loop, we've been trying different loop shapes and seeing if any of them contain integers. So for any loop shape, we can solve for the m that if you put it through the 3m plus 1 rule, you get the same m back out, making a loop. And there are seven loops of length k equals 8 with x equals 5 up moves. Every m has the form beta over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. And here, every m has this denominator 13. But none of the betas are multiples of 13, so there are no integer loops here. And if we study this chart, we've found that uh, 485 over 13 and 421 over 13 are in the same loop, which if they were both integers, uh, so would be their difference, 64 over 13. But 13 can't divide a power of 2, so this can't be an integer loop. You might think, hey, maybe that's a coincidence. I mean, it's bound to happen with this many numbers in the chart. But there's actually a reason for it, and we showed previously that the high loop in every chart has two such members. Okay, so far so good. But if we look at the chart for k equals 11, x equals 7, and see that it has 30 loop shapes, one of these loops actually does contain integers. Right here. 23, 23 is a multiple of 139. Actually, negative 139. This is the famous negative 17 loop a.k.a. the 17 loop for the 3n minus 1 problem. And let's not forget these two loops for the 5n plus 1 problem. Who's to say that this kind of thing won't happen again with some huge numbers circling around in some super long loop? Maybe we should study these examples. Uh, you know, it's hard to find patterns in so little data, but we can try. So first, does the bottom of a loop have to be a prime number? Or does the loop have to have a prime length? I mean, that's true here, but both of these ideas are proven false by the 181n plus 1 loop. So just the accidents. Or how about the odd terms clustering near the beginning of a loop? That kind of makes sense. If the smallest member of a loop doesn't rocket up, it runs the risk of dipping below itself, and then it wouldn't be the smallest member, would it? Okay, here's something else. 17 has the form 2 to the n plus 1. And the next term, 25, is 8 higher than 17, and 8's a power of 2. Uh, you know, is that all just accidental? So let's see. Actually, numbers of the form 2, n, to, the, 2 to the n plus 1 are exactly the numbers that rocket up for the 3n minus 1 problem. The rocket numbers for 3n plus 1 are 2 to the n minus 1, which is why 31 takes so long to reach 1. Do you remember this one-to-one -one mapping between start numbers and initial even-odd trajectories? For the numbers 0 through 7, we see every even-odd sequence once. So the rocket numbers, mod 8 here, are in yellow. And for the 5n plus 1 problem, numbers mod 5, no, numbers 5 mod 8 do the rocketing. And sure enough, 13 is 5 mod 8. So that's a good explanation. And back to this 25. Well, if the first number of a 3n minus 1 loop is indeed 2 to the n plus 1, then some simple math shows the next number is always higher by a power of 2. So no accident there. Another curious thing is that there are two mini circuits here uh, in this 3n minus 1 loop. Is that somehow a promising loop shape? So we know the bottom of a circuit uh, has a beta 3 to the x minus 2 to the x, and this near circuit has this bottom member. So why would this turn out to be an integer? Is there some reason? Well, after a bunch of math, we get this possible reason, which seems like a minor coincidence. But if such a coincidence were to hold again somewhere further down the number line, then maybe we'd find another 3n minus 1 loop. I mean, who knows? And look here. 43 minus 17 is 26 which is found in the other loop. And 27 shows up in two loops. Are these patterns or maybe just one-off coincidences? Well, you can make yourself crazy with so few positive examples of loops. And keep in mind that these are all small numbers. And there are severe differences in how small numbers and big numbers behave. Just for example, adjacent powers of 2 and 3 happen all the time in small number land. But they never happen out in big number land, provably. Anyway, we have lots more uh, negative examples of loop shapes than positive examples. So next time, 
Uh, let's go back and look at them and examine more pairs of numbers on those charts.